Hello, my name is Asa and I'm an SD1 at Google. When I look back at my journey from mechanical engineering to software development, I remember being so confused and lost at the beginning. If someone had told me that I would be interning at a big EV company and later working at Google, I would have laughed at them and told them that it was impossible. Today, I want to share a simple 12-week plan that will take you from I know nothing about coding to I just got my first big tech internship. The plan is personal because I have went through all of these steps myself. I remember the late night trying to fix errors in my code, being overwhelmed by all the resources and advices out there. You might feel the same way but trust me if you take it one week at a time and stick with this plan you'll start seeing real progress weeks one to two clearing the basics and avoiding the tutorial help so in the first two weeks your primary goal is to get clear with the basics of coding and avoid falling into the tutorial hell. This happens when you actually watch series of never-ending videos and countless blogs without actually ever coding yourself. So pick one main resource, maybe it's a well-reviewed course on Udemy or it's a concise YouTube playlist, but stick to it. Resist the urge to jump from one tutorial to the other just because it has cool thumbnails or someone on Reddit recommended it. Learn the syntax of your chosen language and immediately apply what you learn by coding small and practical problems. Write a simple program, get errors, fix them and then run it again. This hands-on process cements your knowledge far better than simply consuming these long videos. By the end of week two, you should feel confident in writing simple loops, conditionals, and even functions. Now, we come to week three, that is project building and setting the foundation. Now that you are not stuck in these endless cycles of tutorial hell, you can actually dedicate your week three to creating a small but meaningful project. This could be something as simple as a command line to do list application, or it can be something like a web app that shows you a random code every time that you refresh the page. The idea over here is to step out of the simple hello world zone and to actually create some that you can show on your resume. Don't worry if it doesn't look fancy or a code is a bit messy. What matters is that you are stitching together multiple features like user inputs, data storage, and if you're feeling a bit adventurous, maybe even a front end. This hands-on experience helps you understand how different parts of a program work together in real life. Projects also keep you motivated because you see immediate results. By the end of week three, you will have the foundation of a real application that is 100% yours. Now, coming to week four to five, that is, aptitude and company specific threat. At this point, many people jump headfirst into solving thousands of random lead code problems, but I suggest a different route. Focus on aptitude tests and company specific problem set. Aptitude tests are very common, especially in the preliminary screening rounds of big techs. They often check logical reasoning, simple math, and problem solving skills. You can find plenty of free aptitude test resources online. Some of them are even gamified. Simultaneously, gather information on the company that you plan to apply to. Check if they tend to ask more questions on graph or dynamic programming or string manipulation. Some companies even have well-known question marks or patterns. The link given in the description might lead to the curated list. By targeting your study, you save your time and energy while also improving your odds for clearing those rounds. Besides, you won't feel the pressure that I must solve some random 500 problems. Instead, you will tackle 50 well-chosen coding problems that match your desired company's style and difficulty level. Coming to week 6 to 7, that is strengthening DSA with a purpose. Now, it's time to dive deep into DSA, but you need to do it with a plan. Look up company specific or role specific questions such as does Google usually ask graph problems or do they usually ask tree problems? Does Amazon usually emphasize on arrays or do they emphasize on dynamic programming? Are there popular coding competitions that revolve around particular data structures? Focus on those. If your dream company focuses more on BFS or DFS problems, spend more time in understanding these algorithms deeply. Practice how to optimize your time and space complexities because interviewers love diving in your reasoning. Keep track of your progress in a notebook or maybe a spreadsheet just to keep a track of which questions gave you most trouble. These reflections help you identify your weak spots so that you can revisit them. You won't just be solving random problems, but you will be leveling up in areas that actually matter. By the end of week seven, you will have a robust graph on DSA without burning yourself out on the endless sets of problems. Week eight to nine, res 
resume that beats ATS and cold emails. While gaining technical skills, you also need to focus on your resume. Recruiters often use an application tracking system that basically scans the resume for the relevant experiences as well as for keywords. Ensure that your resume has words like designed, developed, or optimized, especially around your project experiences. Mention the specific technologies that you use like Python or React so that the ATS can pick them up. At the same time, keep the formatting simple because fancy templates might confuse the scanning softwares. Meanwhile, don't ignore the power of cold emailing. Search for hiring managers and software engineers on LinkedIn who are connected to your targeted company. Craft a short and polite message that introduces yourself, states one or two relevant experiences, and highlights your interest on the company. Ask if they're open to discussing opportunities or offering guidance. A lot of people don't reply, but the few that do might become actually very valuable resources, or they may even refer you internally. By the end of week nine, you will have both an ATS-friendly resume and a budding network. Now we come to week 10 and 11, that is avoiding burnout and mock interviews. Once you have your resume ready and a sense of what the company actually asks in an interview, it's time to simulate an actual interview environment. Gather a few friends or peers for mock sessions or you can even connect to individuals online who also want to practice. Decide on your problem, set a timer and talk to your solution as if you are in an actual interview. This helps you refine how you explain your thought process. You might realize that maybe you are too quick to jump into coding or you struggle to articulate the complexities. Another very crucial aspect is to watch your mental health. It's very easy to over prepare and burn out. Doing studying for 10 hours a day, doing questions after questions, panicking over rejections. Always remember that quality beats quantity. So remember to take short breaks. So if you feel fatigued, remember to take short breaks. Go for a walk, read a book, take time and relax. A clear mind not only helps you absorb information better, but it also ensures that you show up for the interview with genuine energy and clarity. Now we come to week 12, that is final steps and behavioral interviews. By this stage, you are ready to submit applications or you might already be in the process. Don't just rely on job portals. Use your network, ask for referrals and follow up if you haven't heard back in a week or two. Also, never underestimate the power of behavioral interviews. Many big companies have rounds dedicated to evaluate your teamwork, your leaderships and your conflict resolution skills. Even smaller firms include questions like tell me about time when you handle stress or tell me about a time when you failed. Prepare short stories that highlight your experience from a college project or maybe even your personal stories. Remember that the interviewer wants to see your growth and self-awareness. The key is to be honest without dwelling too much on negativity. Frame failures as lessons learned. By the end of week 12, you have shaped a strong resume, you have fine-tuned your technical skills and you have connected with the relevant people. You have further equipped yourself to handle both technical and behavioral questions. Now, reflecting on the emotional journey. Throughout this 12-week journey, expect emotional highs and lows. You might feel lost when you can't understand stand a tutorial or maybe while facing repeated rejections. Then comes a win. Maybe you fix a bug or a cold email leads to a conversation or maybe you nail a mock interview. But progress is really linear. Sometimes you may wonder if your dream of landing a big tech internship may be too far-fetched. I remember feeling the same way when I switched from mechanical engineering to software development, frequently doubting if I belonged. The truth is that the feeling of not being good enough lurks in many students' minds. Whenever that feeling creeps in, always remember that you are following a very targeted course plan rather than following someone else's step blindly. We are focusing on company-specific prep, building real-world applications, and connecting with the professionals within your industry. That is already much more than many students do. Confidence ultimately comes from action and consistency. A new perspective. Now that you have finally reached the end of these 12 weeks, pat yourself on the back. You have managed to learn a programming language without drowning yourself in tutorials. You have built at least one project that's truly your own, tackled company-specific DSA problems, and even understood the importance of aptitude tests. Further, you have refined your resume to be ATS-friendly, and you have learned the art of cold emailing. You have also also practiced mock interviews that made a real life condition. If you look back at the anxious person who started this journey, you'll see a very significant growth. You might not be perfect, but believe me, no one ever is. But you are miles ahead from where you started. Keep in mind that landing a big tech internship isn't simply about memorizing code. It's about displaying problem solving, adaptability, and resilience in the face of challenges. Job hunts can be very long and nerve wracking, but now you have a roadmap that keeps you consistent and calm. Trust yourself, stay curious,
curious and always be open to opportunities. You'll never know which one of them might be your breakthrough. Now, taking the next step. After this official 12 weeks, your journey will continue in a less structured but an equally meaningful way. You may have interviews lined up or you may be even waiting for your first call back. Either way, don't stop refining. Tweak your project or maybe start a different one that addresses a new problem or maybe an entirely different tech stack. Keep an eye on the link in the description for the updated company specific question set so that you're always prepared. Maintain connections with the people that you have emailed. Maybe send them a small update or a quick message of gratitude if they have helped you in any way. Start paying it forward too. If a friend asks for advice, share what you have learned about the ATS friendly formatting. The more you will help others, the better you will understand your own progress. Above all, no let a few rejections make you question your whole plan. Every no is a step closer to the right yes. So keep moving forward with your newfound skills and optimism. Now, in conclusion, as you wrap up, remember that success is not landing a one internship or that one job offer. True success comes from the person that you become along the way. The determination, the focus and the ability to rise back after each setback. By engaging in targeted coding practice, refining your aptitude skills, mastering a single project at a time and reaching out to industry professionals, you have carved out a path that is different from doing mindless tutorials and mass applying to different companies. There's a world of opportunity awaiting you and you're in a much better position than you were 12 weeks ago. Keep learning, keep experimenting and trust that your dedication will yield results. And even if you face obstacles, always remind yourself why you started. It may be to provide for your family, break into a new field or maybe to just explore the world of technology. Whatever your reason is, just let it propel you forward. The future looks bright and with the plan that you have followed, you are ready to seize it.